with figurative art, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But I do have a process for starting a painting that pretty much goes across all of the things I do. I do figures, I do animals, I do pure non-representational abstract. I do series of things that interest me. I've been doing vessel paintings. I have a couple in your gallery right now. Um, as a matter of fact, I was delighted to jury your show. It's a wonderful show. Uh, sadly, I won't be able to he be here on Saturday because I'll be teaching, but um, have a wonderful reception. And um, if anybody wants to talk to me about your particular piece of art, you can always um, message me on Instagram <laughs> or, um, or, or email me, either one. So, I teach um, at the Art on 30th. Anybody ever heard of that? It's in North Park. It's a wonderful gallery. Kate Ashton is the owner of Kate Ashton is the owner of it, and uh, she has been a wonderful mentor for me. I teach there. She represents me as an artist. I show my art there. I also teach occasionally at um, the San Diego Watercolor Society, and then you know do these things. I'm doing a workshop this weekend at Foothills Art Association on Saturday, which is why I won't be coming here. And uh, just, just around, but I teach consistently at Art on 30th. I have a class coming up mid-November, uh, The Expressive Figure. So if that interests you, you can check it out. Okay, so, but most of my stuff starts kind of the same way. I wanted to show you. This is what I'm going to be working on today. And it's, it's, a, it's a wood panel. You know, I work on canvas, I work on wood panels, I work on paper. This is, this is a painting that didn't work. And it used to be like this. Now it's like this. So, and it's paper, 300 pound watercolor paper, affixed to a board. Because I had done it on paper. Are you doing Mod Podge or what are you affixing it with? I usually, I use mostly golden products. Uh, Mod Podge works. Um, and I do use that. It's same stuff. It's all liquid plastic. You know, that's what all acrylic is. It's just plastic and it sticks. Um, I use mostly for heavy duty, heavy duty stuff like this paper is, I use uh, golden soft gel medium. Okay. I put it on the paper. I put it on whatever I'm fixing it to. I put it down, squeegee it out, put a piece of plastic over the top, weight it down with books and leave it for 24 hours. If it's heavy, if it's heavy because I've had the bubbles, you know, and once they dry and you got a big bubble right here, it's really a problem. So anyway, you don't want to do that. Anyway, so I didn't like the painting. I mean, it was okay. I grade my paintings A, B, C. You know, hopefully I never do a D, but I do. If it's a C, I paint over it. You know, art supplies are expensive. So, um, being an acrylic artist, I can just paint over it. Watercolor, you can always turn it over on the back. You can gesso it and do watercolor still. So, don't throw your stuff away is what I'm saying. You can start over. So, I have been, my latest series, I do stuff that just attracts my interest. I get bored real easily. So, I've been doing a series of vessels, pots, vessels, whatever you want to call them. So that's what I'm going to do today, um, but I will show you. These are kind of obscured back here, aren't they? This is um, one of my crow series that I'm doing. See, here's crow. This is, this is um, paintings called All About Me. This is actually a photograph of me. I was feeling like nobody was paying attention to me. Wait, this was several years old. Isn't anybody going to think about me? You know, you, you all had that feeling. I know if you're a mother, you have. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so this one was all about me. But this is paper mounted on a board. And that's what this was. This is the way it looked before I painted over the whole thing. So, and this one I wanted to show you. I'll, I do a lot of people. This is for your drawing. I don't know, you still having your drawing? You had asked me for... That's an, an original sketch there. 
And this is the one I did last time I was here. I don't know if you all were here. I promised you I'd send you the finished version and I never did. So this is the finished version. So I do people, I do animals, I do abstract, I do vessels now. So um, anyway, so enough talk, let's paint. Could I ask you a question before of, you start painting? Of course. What, what is the purpose of the paper versus just painting on the panel itself? For texture or what? Some of it's, this is true. I, every month I put in a painting at the San Diego Watercolor Society. And every month I put two paintings at Art on 30th. So it's three paintings a month. So um, if you want, uh, up until now, the Watercolor Society has just changed its parameters for submission. You now can submit paintings on canvas or boards, which is huge. Um, but you couldn't. So I would paint on paper. And then after it was shown there, if it got in the show, Art on 30th prefers things not framed. So then I mounted on a board. And then I came up with the idea, and I still do this. I put those Velcro sticky dots on the back of my paper paintings. And I have a couple of panels this size with matching sticky dots, the reverse. So I just Velcro them on there. And then when I'm done, I pull them off. So that's the reason. But it does, I think, and I've never painted over one like this. So this is new for me. So this is the paper here. You know, you can probably see where it is. So I paint, I gessoed over my original painting, which was a cat, as a matter of fact, and I liked the cat, but I accidentally varnished it with oil varnish and it turned yellow. So, um, so then I put some charcoal marks on it, which is, whoop, I know I'm going to do this. I did some YouTube demonstrations a while back. And when you're doing those, you're literally like this to your canvas, to your, you know, and it looks like you're really far away, but you're right here. So I'm constantly following. Anyway, so I just sewed over it, and then I took some charcoal and just, you know, made some marks on it, put some more gesso on it, and there was all this texture underneath. It's the beauty of painting over stuff, particularly if you do acrylics, um, because it gives you this wonderful surface underneath. <laughs> Maybe I should move it over a step. There. Okay, that's good. All right. So, I have my my surface is pretty well prepped. Yeah, we're not set up with the screen yet. So yeah, I'm going to do the screen now. We're going to keep going. Oh, okay. All right. But they can't see this. They will in a minute. They will when, they, when I get the cable hooked up. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to jump over to the screen in just a minute. But in the meantime, I did all of that. And then I put some collage papers on it. Um, a lot of these, this came in a box of some packing paper in a box of something, as is this. This is newsprint. And this is just packing paper. You know, people say, oh my gosh, it's not archival. What if it's, you know, it has to be archival. I figure 100 years from now, if somebody still wants to know, that's fine, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Plus, once you put the acrylic paint on it, it sort of protects it anyway. So, um, so this is my start, and most of the time I really don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this. But this obviously looks like the beginning of a pot, this rectangle here. So maybe I'll do that, but I don't want it to go directly over it because that's not as interesting. So, um, Roberta, that's a tropical over here. Oh. <laughs> It's a tropical scene. A tropical scene, yes. Well, we feel like we're in the tropics now anyway, right? So hot. So hot. Okay. So, I'm sorry, just a quick question. So you don't really paint over the entire thing. You're sort of making decisions about, like, around the paper, right? Once you start to get to the paint part. Not necessarily. Oh. It's an option. Okay. I make no promises. 
<laughs> to myself or the painting or anybody else. It just flows. It doesn't flow. It goes by fits and starts. It's really hard. If you're an intuitive painter and you don't know where you're going with something, it's painful. I'm telling you, it is painful. So, okay, are you good now? Are we good? Yep. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to... I, I take a look at it and I go, okay, I think I want three pots. And maybe I'll put a flower in it, maybe I won't. I usually don't because I think flowers can make a painting too cute, too sweet, too fast. Um, I do florals and I love doing florals, but they're, you know, anyway. So I'm going to start out and see this is right in the middle. And I don't think I want my biggest image right in the middle. So I may move it over a little bit. There's more weight on this side so because of all of these, which may end up being covered up. So I think I will just put my, my pot maybe here. Okay, one pot, right? Okay, so then I think I'll put another pot maybe here somewhere. I think, I think maybe this one will go off. It'll be a different shape because God knows we don't want things to match, right? Okay, so there are a couple of guys here. Okay, now I want somebody living over here. Maybe bigger, because I kind of like this vertical thing going on up here. So I think maybe I'll do, I got a couple with straight sides, so I think I'll do something with, with round sides. Do I want them to touch? I don't know. Okay. All right? We good? Yep. Everybody got that? Okay. That's it. You know, I'm not, I'm not painting a portrait of a pot. I'm creating a painting. So let me just get some paints out here real quick. Got, where is that? Are you working in acrylics? I am working in acrylics today. I use a lot of mark making, this fine vine charcoal. I love this stuff. This is Bob's fine vine charcoal. It's just a wonderful product, you know. I love to draw. Drawing's my thing, really, more than painting. Um, but this is my, my palette. You know if you do acrylic painting, you can always peel the colors off of your palette and use them for collage material. They're called skins. I use big brushes. Until the very end, I will go big rather than um, small. I also love using color shapers. These are rubber, you know, for putting paint on. I'll show them to you in a minute. And uh, because I, this is sort of a small size for me, I go bigger often. Um, I'm currently working on a couple of pieces that are um, four by five feet. I know, it's a workout too, I'll tell you. It's got to be good for me, right? <laughs> okay, so what's that? It hasn't killed you yet. It hasn't killed me yet. Hopefully it's keeping me young. Um, multiple pieces at the same time. I do. I generally do because I'm very attention deficit. I'll work for 15 minutes and go away. And then when I, and then so it's not really while it's drying, it's just because I get bored with this one, I have to go do something else or I have to go read my book or, you know. Are you makes, a Gemini? Am I what? Are you Gemini? No, I'm an Aquarius. Which should make me very calm, and <laughs> and I am generally pretty calm, but but I do get bored quickly. Okay, so which colors am I going to use today? This is black gesso. This is white gesso. I will often use them instead of the um, paint itself because it, number one, it's cheaper, and I love the flat black because it's totally flat. You know, there's no, there's no shine to gesso, and, and I like that. Okay, so I've got black and white. Oh, I might try that. It's the color violet oxide. Has anybody ever used that? I have the most trouble with it. I may use it today just, just so I can um, see what I can do with it. One of my favorites, Quinn Nicolazo Gold. Oh, great color. 
Uh, what else? I love red and orange, so we've got to have a little red as a finish. You can buy cobalt blue again. Has anybody tried to buy cobalt blue in the last six months? You can't get it. But now Golden can get the ingredients again, so they're making it. I was so excited. I mostly, I live in um, Point Loma, so I usually go to Artisan Craftsman Supply or Blick down in um, Little Italy. And I would see if you have one of these, you can just squeeze the paint right out on the thing. It's so fun. Okay, I've got some cobalt blue. I've got some Quinn Azo gold, Oop, which isn't even open, Ugh, even better. This you couldn't find for a long time either, like all last year. What's the name of that color? Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. I'll show you, it's just a wonderful color. <laughs> what was that, are you talking behind my back? <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse. <laughs> okay, so I'll just, I'll just show you this. Um, it's one of my favorite brushes right here. Love this brush. Uh, you know, it's so old. It's probably a 12. It was my sister's. She died about 20 years ago. And oh God, it's more than that now, more like 25 years ago. And I'm still using it. It's, uh, I don't think it was extraordinarily expensive brush, but I don't know what the number is. Okay, just to show you how wonderful this color is. Oh, do you not just love that? I mean, and if that's a brush. Paint your sister? I, I don't do portraits. I do people, but not portraits. You know, they, they don't look like you know, um, they don't look like the photographs. See, this is the color shaper. If you really want to get the paint on nice and smooth without too many brush strokes, this is a great way to do it. Covers a lot of territory and the paint doesn't get stuck in your brush and you end up cleaning it out later. So, the other thing I like about using the charcoal is um, when you paint up next to it, it blends in with the acrylic so that you get this wonderful shadowing effect on the side. So, okay, and, and this Nicolazo gold, see how it's translucent? You can see through it. So that's kind of nice too. And if you want it to be less transparent, you just mix some white in with it. This is the gesso. I have a, a gallon of it and I just offload it onto um, my canned peaches jars. So what was the orange color you used? That was, that's the Nicolazo gold. And this is it mixed with, with white. See, it's just a marvelous color. This is gonna be interesting because I'm totally painting over my back. Okay. Let's put a little paint on this. I, I know I don't have tons and tons of time, so. And me being ADD, I'll probably go off anyway. Feel free to just jump in, questions, whatever. Whatever you want to know. I guess the gesso, the reason you're using gesso is because it's totally opaque. It is totally opaque, and the yeah. titanium is not. Right. The heavy body titanium uh, can be pretty opaque, but you got to put it on thick, you know. This is this color that I can't work with very well, the violet oxide. Violet oxide. Okay, I'm going to put that over here on this guy. Oh, that's really ugly. Okay. <laughs> now, if I wanted some of the this newsprint to show through, I can take my color shaper and go back through it. You see that? And, and it takes enough paint off. Now maybe I should add a little of this over here so they talk to each other. Is Color Shaper the brand name? Or it's the name of the tool. Oh, okay. Never heard of that it's a wonderful, so you can come back in and you can mark in back in on your paint, which you can also do with the back end of your brush. <laughs> So, I just use what's handy. 
Let's see, what else do we want to do? Let's try mixing a little cobalt with this ugly color. Oh, that makes pretty purple, actually. Yeah. So I think painting should be an adventure, yes. you know? And if I plan things out first, my paintings are so tight and so boring that there's just no sense me wasting my time. Now this is that nickel, I mean that violet oxide with some cobalt in it, and that's gorgeous. Let's put some stripes of that over in here so they'll still talk to each other. Maybe we'll have one of those stripes go across. And then maybe we'll put a little of the nickel azo over in here. Oh, I'm having fun. See, now I love this color. Thank you guys for encouraging me. <laughs> I'm going to stick. Am I standing in front of you? You see, you're seeing my back, right? Yeah. OK. Yeah, but you can Isn't that fun? Woo, tell you what, that's my southern accent coming in. <laughs> Little shadow coming off the side here. Are you I'm left handed, so yes, I am. I think you just have to be. Um, if I'm doing something really fine, like right at the end, and I have to do it well, I, I almost always use my left hand. But, and see, I don't know if you all can see this, but see, this, is, this piece of paper right here is underneath this. And it soaks the paint up differently than the gessoed part, which makes it really an interesting surface. You know, it's, I want people to look at, have to go close to my paintings to see what I did. You know, I say, how did she do that? Oh, look at this in there and look at that in there. Um, that's what I aim for. So having all this fun stuff going on in the background is pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Is this. You should see my studio. Oh my God. When I'm, when I'm, particularly when I'm finishing a painting, you know, because you need a little of this and a little of that, and my studio, and because I do a lot of collage and paper stuff, it's just, oh, it's a disaster, but it's fun. Okay, I'm going to make this, this color, but that's, I think I'll add a little white to that. Do you find that when you clean up your studio, it takes away from your creativity? <laughs> to a point. I can let it get so far out of kilter that it makes me crazy to be in there. I have to clean up a little bit every now and then. But if it were totally clean, yes. Let's see, what do we, maybe some stripes here. Roberta, can you talk a little bit about this idea of intuition or intuitive painting and just letting go and being so loose and experimentation? Can you talk a little bit about that? For hours. <laughs> the, the key to it, and it's really, really almost impossible to do, is to not care. Yeah. You know, well, as to just, if it turns out to be ugly, that's cool. If it turns out to be great, that's cool. If it's acrylic paint, screw it, just cover over it, cover it over and do something else. But it's more a question of, you have to have a passion for what you're doing. I wish I had more of a passion. Am I just getting my face, aren't you? More of a passion for art than I do. I don't, I'm not, because I'm an Aquarius, I'm not a passionate person. But I do love art and I do love the process of art. I love the exploration of it. I love just what I did here. I wonder what would happen if I did this or if I did that. And that spurs me on to be intuitive and to take me to the next level. The other thing with being intuitive is you reach a point where you have to finish it. And that really sucks, you know, because you, then you have to stop and think and make good decisions. It takes me a very long time to finish a painting. I will turn it to the wall for a week and then I'll look at it, it's always in the back of my head and I may do just one little thing. Now see, I'm seeing some bright cobalt in here now. Um, but I, it might take me a week to figure that out, you know? So I think I'll just put some right here. And I can't really tell you why I'm putting it here 
just that it seems right to me. Now, I'm using a dirty brush, so um, the paint's sort of mixing in there as well. It's not, it's not a true cobalt, plus this is, these fluid acrylics are more translucent than the heavy bodied, just in general. Um, so I'm thinking, and here again, if you're doing acrylics or even oils, you know, watercolor, it's more problematic. It's one of the reasons I, I left it because I, I would paint like this and I would just end up with this god awful muddy mess. So I thought there's got to be a better way for me than this. So I went back to acrylics, which I had done in the 70s, you know, way back then, and found that it suits my style better. Um, I can be more intuitive, I can be looser, because I know I can fix it quickly. Um, let's see, what do we want? I think we, see I have some blue over here, so I'm thinking all the time. It's intuitive, but I'm thinking. I'm thinking about balance, I'm thinking about composition, I'm thinking I need this, the throat of this pot or the inside of this pot to be this color, just because I can. You know, and maybe I'll put a little outline of blue on this shadow here. Maybe a little more. It's gonna be really interesting to look at this head on and see, <laughs> and see what I've done. Now I've got all this area up in here, and you know every painting has to have a resting space because the viewer's eye can't dance around constantly without going, ah, I need a break. So I don't know what I'm gonna do up here. I see a palm tree up there. Yeah. Somebody else said tropical. Should we put in a palm tree? Let's put in a palm tree. I'll, I'll just show you how with, um, with acrylics, you can put it in, but you don't have to leave it. You can paint over it. There you go, palm tree. <laughs> you don't agree? Okay, here we go, palm tree. This painting like this is fun, I'm telling you. And you know, as long as I've done art, I've been doing art seriously now. I've always kind of been an artist, but uh, for about 25 years. And uh, if it's not fun, what's the point, you know? So, okay. Well, this, this then has to become a coconut drink, right? <laughs> With the flower in it? Yeah. And this then becomes the tablecloth. Maybe we'll put a flower up there. Wasn't my vision, but hey. Things, things change, right? So then we need some green if we're gonna do a palm tree. And I'll probably use my color shaper for, makes good palm fronds, I'll show you. That's not gonna make a bright enough green, I don't think. I try and limit my palette, my colors, because my stuff tends to be kind of involved and this has just become bizarre. So, <laughs> so see, isn't that wonderful? So here's another palm frond here. Maybe we'll have the wind blowing it over this way. Um, but these, these are a great tool. I don't know what I ever did before I discovered these. And I give Kate Ashton at Art on 30th credit for introducing me to these. They're just, just a wonderful tool. Do they come in different sizes? They, yes, there's, I had, there's the one inch here. I've got three inch, and I think there's a two inch as well, which. Right. I've never seen the one. Yeah, the one, if you need to get up in little niche places, works, but I don't use it that often, but, um, but they are handy. Okay, mix in a little more blue, and with Nicolaso blue, Nicolazo gold doesn't make for a bright green, I will tell you, but since I'm trying to limit my palette, we'll just go with that. I know you guys may never see this palm tree again after today. And see, I'm just using the, the edge of this to give it a, you know, come back in and give it a little palm frondy stuff. That needs to go all the way off the top. 
this is why finishing is so difficult for me because this is so loose and so much fun and the finish is not. You know, it has to be a little more thought out, a little tighter. I mean, not tight, but you know what I mean. You have to bring it home when you're finished. So this is looking pretty dull. Excuse me, I've got to get back. Well, it's kind of fun, huh? Not bad. Not bad. I think I will introduce some real yellow here. We need some brightness in there. <clears throat> so the point is most of my paintings start with the same method, whether it's going whatever the end result is. I love activating the canvas this way, the canvas, the surface, whatever you're going to call it. Um, because it, it gives me permission to start. You know, as Richard Diebenkorn said, you know, if you don't know what to do, just step towards your canvas and make a mark. And then make another mark. And one thing will lead to another. And, and that's the truth. I mean, you, you, you should try not to let yourself be intimidated by your surface because you're in charge. It's not in charge, you're in charge. And it's hard to remember that when you get stuck and you don't know where to go next. But just remember, do something and you're in charge. Yes, I like that. I didn't see the blue down the shadow below until you pushed it out. Up. Yeah, see, there you go. Push and pull. My paintings are push and pull. Oh, I meant so he focused the camera back. Oh. It wasn't cutting up the bottom of the picture. And so now I see the balance of the blue. I love it. Oh, thank you. This is the oddest combination of colors. You guys are my guinea pigs today. Working this, working with this violet stuff. It's always better to mix your paints on your canvas as opposed to on your palette because it's just more interesting for people to look at. You have, you know, a little white and you have a little yellow and you have a little this and a little... 3.30, have about half an hour. Okay. Oh, you still have to get the straw in there. Oh, got to put the straw in. Yeah. And I might do something like, because the paper stuck to this board gives you sort of a natural frame I may put something fun around here. Mm -hmm. Maybe yellow and red stripes or maybe bright blue. I didn't bring my heavy bodied cobalt. What do you think? Cobalt. I think the cobalt too. Okay. Now 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 I see I've lost my I've lost my lines, so I'm going to come back in. I'm going to add some of my lines back just for fun. This one, I think I'll... The fish, I think the fish is here, right? Is this a fish? Oh, this is the eye. Okay, so it's swimming in. Okay, it's still wet. I can't draw on it. <laughs> There it's, we're going total stream of consciousness here. <laughs> it passed through the hookah suits. So like yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's flying free. Okay. Now, normally at this point, I'll back away from it and let it rest for a while and then come back in and make adjustments. I spend a lot of time walking all the way across my studio and back to look at it. Oh, you guys are seeing a very pale version of this. I should hold it up for you to see. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? You still like that red? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take some of my black gesso. And 
This is also black gesso. This is black gesso, and this is black gesso. I just love this stuff, I'm telling you. It can solve a lot of problems. I'm going to bring this border in here. Oops. I'm also not a neat painter, which may dictate part of my style because I just, there's things I can't do and be neat is one of them. That's another important thing about, oops, see what I mean? Finding your voice as a painter. But you gotta find what you love and what you do pretty well. If you can combine those two, you're in good shape. I, I draw really well. So I love drawing. So I try and always have some of my drawing showing in my paintings because that's one of my skills. You know, I'm also really good at composition. Um, painting, not so much. I'm not a, um, not a skilled applier of paint. So I make that work for me by being kind of messy. It's part of my style. Oh yeah, that's fun. Yep, yep, yep. I'm liking this. So you naturally probably judge based on your life, correct? So when I when I jury a paint when I to your style maybe? No. No? No, I don't. I I normally jury a painting on something that catches my eye. I look at value. The first things I look at or it's something that catches my eye, value, composition, technique, whether you're good at what you're doing, you know. And then I look at things I like, you know. But the first thing, the first things I always look at are, is it something that strikes me just because of its maybe value shift, value contrast, I don't know what it is, but something go, oh, that's different, I like that. And then I'll look at it more closely and see, is it well done? Um, is the composition good? Does the artist seem self-assured? You know, that's the hard part because none of us are. I mean, doing art is terribly humbling, you know. But, um, but those are the things I look at. No, I try, when I'm during a show um, that has all different kinds of art in it, I try and find representatives of all those different kinds of art. Because if you do, if it's just personal preference, <clears throat> then you're really not, oops, wrong way. Okay, well that's dipping down there. Okay. You're not giving a fair shot to the artist if it's just what I like. Because I like bright colors and I like, you know, crazy stuff. And, but that's not the only thing that's good art. There's a lot of wonderful art out there. Isn't that fun? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, thank you guys. You just helped me do a whole new thing. I, this is not at all what was in my head when I started. <laughs> do you want to um, take a few questions? Sure. Anybody? Do you want to talk a little bit about, because um, I know you said that you enter a lot of art exhibitions and I do. Shows. I do. And then you are are you represented by Art on 30th or you're just I am represented by Art on 30th. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want to talk a little bit about sales or the career aspect, let's say, of art? I could I could and I will, but I'm not an expert at it because I'm sorry, are you Oh, oh, I'm so, okay. Um, because I'm terrible at sales. It's not something that I do well. I can do this all day. You know, I can perform, I can wave my hands, I can make everybody have a good time. But if it comes to getting somebody to buy something that I tore out of my soul, I'm not good at that at all. So if you're not, some people are. It's just natural to them and I envy them so much <laughs> because I'm not. Then it's important to have somebody else represent you who can, who can talk you up. You know, I'm more than willing to pay a commission for somebody else to sell my art. Now the, the Instagram, for me, because I don't work at it and 
Um, just as an aside, my daughter quit being a lawyer and opened a small bridal boutique appointment only. She does all of her advertising on Instagram and she's doing really well. Really well. Better than as a lawyer? Well, she hated being a lawyer. Oh. You know? Yeah. It, it was killing her. What kind of law? Well, she started, she started out as a family lawyer, which is devastating for somebody who, you know. But then she ended up, after a few years, she was doing, um, she was representing disabled veterans to the VA and she loved doing it, but her workload was so severe. And it was during COVID and her two daughters were at home on their computers all the time. It was just, you know, and she said, I can't do this anymore. So she's, she's always been a fashionista kind of, you know, so this was something she wanted to do and she did it and rents then were pretty low, you know, so she was able to make a good, a good, have a good lease and it's appointment, I, it's just wonderful, she's so happy. But she does, she uses Instagram and then directs people to her website to make appointments. That's the way it works. You want to give it a plug. What's that? You want to give it a plug. Oh, it's called Vivant. Malone. So if any of your daughters, granddaughters, sons are getting married, she has this beautiful little shop in Point Loma and she's a lovely person and she's actually good at sales. But back to sales, I think if, you, if you're depending on your income as an artist, you have to do a couple of things. You have to explore all the avenues for selling, whether, whether it's going to weekend art shows, going to finding a gallery to represent you, working Instagram like a dog, which is a lot of work, you know, if you do it right, and figuring out what people want to buy. Because if you're going to be a professional sales artist, you've got to paint what people are going to buy. People either like this or they don't. I have the luxury of not giving a flip, you know. Um, although I do love this painting, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> You guys, we're going to have to group paint more. <laughs> uh, yes, I sign it. Let's talk about signing for a minute. Um, sometimes, well, let me talk about a couple of things before, before even before signing. When I, because I use mixed media, sometimes I will use, I use water-soluble crayons. These Stabilo crayons are, are wonderful. If this is this green, if I just wanted to have just a little bit of just a little highlight right here of green. I might put that in there. Isn't that fun? How do you spell Stabilo? Stabilo. S-T-A-B-I-L-O. Um, but it's water soluble. So it's not stable. The charcoal is not stable. So if, I, if it's going to be in my final layer, I spray a fixative, a, um, an archival finish varnish on it. Um, Golden makes one, Winsor Newton makes one, Mod Podge makes one, uh, spray can uh, initially because if you if you take a brush over this charcoal it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna run. So I will spray two or three coats of the archival spray varnish on it then if I want a smoother finish then I can come back and and lay in um, uh, a liquid varnish. Usually I just spray it and let it go. So you have to do that if you're doing mixed media and you're doing water soluble or pastels or charcoal. Does that make it shiny? You can get matte, you can get satin, you can get gloss. So you can make it, whoever said that, make it, it, make it any, anything you want. Yeah, it, there's a lot of, um, oh, it's like a pastel fixative, you know, but it's permanent. It's not a workable fixative, um, which sometimes you need. Um, Okay, so signing. I sign my whole name, Roberta Dyer, because I want people to know exactly who did it. Some do a, a you know a signature, a little scribble, but I want my name on my painting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> me. I did this. I want you to know it. So I might for this painting, I'd probably sign it in black. Um, yeah, that'll answer. Where would I put it? Maybe, maybe right in here. Can you all see this on the screen? I might put it right in here. I might put it vertically here. Um, 
Sometimes I have I have this one painting. It's a floral, and I absolutely love it. It's pinks and grays and whites and blacks. Actually, it's hanging in my house. I love it so much. And I signed it up here in pink, pretty big, but it just fit in with the painting. You want whatever you put on your painting not to be shouting. You don't want it to be timid, but you don't want it to take over the painting. And this was a big, big painting with huge flowers on it, so I could get away with putting my I can't remember now if it was vertical or horizontal, but um, anyway, did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Did you decide not to put a straw in there? Oh, the straw! I forgot the straw! <laughs> no, I got to talking and um, <laughs> you want the straw. We want the straw. We want the straw. Let's see. A monkey on the pond. You guys got the, let's see, it's got to be fairly bright now or dark. That's still pretty wet. Let's, let's see. It's too wet to take the paint, too much of the paint. So it looked like a straw. It did, didn't it? Blue straw would take away from the palm tree. Yeah, it does kind of, doesn't it? You shouldn't do that, but I paint with my hands a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm digging the straw anymore. I don't know. It's a work in progress. There's a, <laughs> you think? <laughs> Who said there's a lot going on? Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> so we're going to turn this into a, um, a, yeah, a, a Salvador Dali, right? Stream of consciousness. We're taking the straw out. Straw goes. So now what am I going to do down here? Because that's already dry. You, you also, if you use your fingers, don't lick your fingers. <laughs> I have discovered, oh, this is wonderful. I have a lot of paintings, because I paint a lot, you know, um, that are okay. They're not, you know, they're okay. Get rid of the little black at the palm tree where you came down. Oh, you don't like that? No. Yes, I like that going off. We like it going off, but she doesn't like where I messed up here. Next time I need to change my style, I'm coming back here and we're going to have a group paint. <laughs> oh, too wet. I'll have to fix that later. Yeah, I like it cleaner too, though. Yeah. But that's, that's going to have to wait for another day. So, but the bottom line for all of this is just have a good time, you know? I mean, our lives are short. Uh, and um, all your paintings. Oh, thank you. Whoever yeah. said that, I appreciate it. I I hope that they say something. That's my aim: is that they speak to somebody. Um, whether the animals and my people, particularly, I just want them to talk to you. Um, this one kind of does. I mean, it's just a funny. Oh, please. Fish out of water. Oh. <laughs> You got it. Also, we'll tell you how different this is from my normal style. <laughs> the fish out of water. I like it. Oh. So, uh, Valerie told me the beautiful oh. prize that we're giving away. Um, Roberta, would you like to draw for this for us? With your oh, I was going to say I already drew it. <laughs> okay. Did everybody get, everybody get your tickets out? Okay. Everybody ready? Hmm? One five one zero seven seven. Seventy seven. Oh, Byron! <laughs> Congratulations.